successful black men a lot of the time do not deal with black women. That's just the reality. You look <laughs> at athletes, you look at celebrities, etc. The first thing they, uh, a lot of black men do when they make money is they go and they run and get a white girl, a Latina, an Asian, whatever it is, right? This is the uncomfortable truth that a lot of African-American women dislike, okay? Educated black women, far less likely to get into a relationship than an educated Caucasian woman. Okay. Black women have the lowest approval rate of all the other um, races of women. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Black women have the lowest approval rate of all the other races on dating apps. So I actually took notes as everybody was speaking and everyone on the panel made fantastic points that I want to just touch on a little bit. And I want to preface this and let people know that Kevin Samuels is a personal friend of mine. You know, we talk on the phone uh, at least once or twice a week. And, you know, the guy is very smart, like yes. very high IQ. Um, and I just want to say this. So here's the reality. I'm going to say some uncomfortable things that might piss some people off, but I'm going to say it. It, it is what it is. Successful black men, a lot of the time, do not deal with black women. That's just the reality. You look <laughs> at athletes, you look at celebrities, etc. The first thing they, uh, a lot of black men do when they make money is they go and they run and get a white girl, a Latina, an Asian, whatever it is, right? This is the uncomfortable truth that a lot of African-American women dislike, okay? Now, what Kevin is doing, contrary to what these, what uh, a lot of African-American women think, is he's trying to bring black men and black women together. So he's going right into the hornet's nest and, and, and telling the black women, this is why you're losing these black men to these, to these other races of women. Because here's the reality, and there's empirical data to prove this. Black women have the lowest approval rate of all the other um, races of women. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Black women have the lowest approval rate of all the other races on dating apps because they've done it on OkCupid and a couple other dating apps where they looked and said that they saw that black women have the lowest response rates. Now, I know people are saying, well, why is that relevant? I'll tell you why it's relevant, because on online dating apps, people are brutally honest with yes. what they actually like. Yes. That's why the data is so good. So black women have the lowest approval ratings. And on top of that, black women, by far, when you look at the numbers, prefer African-American men. Why is this a problem? Well, it goes as simple as this. Black men are like the universal blood donor. They'll deal with other demographics of women if they can. Women are blood type A. They yes. can only deal with African-American men typically. That's what they prefer. But the men that they want can date a whole plethora of women versus their, what they're looking for is a very segmented portion of the, of the community. Now, let's add some buffers onto that that make it worse. Educated black women far less likely to get into a relationship than an educated Caucasian woman. Okay. Ooh. Kevin talks about this on his show it, with, with data and the women don't like to hear it. Right. So, and here's another uncomfortable truth that I'm going to say, black women almost universally don't respect black men. Uh -oh. yep, let me say it again, black you get the point right there. there almost always do not respect black men. And the reason why let's keep it real in the African-American community, a lot of women grow up in fatherless households, right? Their mother tells them it. Yep. The music tells them. Society tells them. So a lot of African American women grow up in a household where they just inherently don't respect black men, and they have more masculine traits because they're raised by a woman that told them you need to compete with men and get out there and get it. That's fine. I ain't gonna knock successful women. It is what it is. Go out there and earn and become successful. But. But, 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 there's always two sides to it, right? I always say this. The more money a man makes, the more doors open. The more money a woman makes, the more doors close. And for black women, it's even worse. Because since black women prefer black men, according to the stats, right? The black men that they're looking for that make a certain amount of money, certain height, etc., are literally like a one percentage. And all the women want this guy. But guess what? These guys can date Asians. White women, Latinas, etc. Especially these entertainers and celebrities of which these black women are chasing. So what Kevin is doing is this. He's giving them a cold, hard dose of reality that, listen, these men that you're chasing are not looking for you and society lied to you. This is what you need to do. Here's realistic standards. And this is where you really fall in the sexual marketplace. Not what you think that you're a 10. This is where you really fall according to men. And then when the women get mad, he tells them, listen, because the, the, every woman's defense is this. Well, I have a lot of guys pursuing me, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. How many guys are getting down on one knee and proposing to you? That's when I just hear crickets all over the place. They, don't, they have nothing to say. Just 
Because they know. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like they know that they that they that they're not getting guys to commit to them seriously. And I always say it. Man game is being able to attain a woman. Girl game is can you retain a guy post sex? And when Kevin gives them this uncomfortable reality, can you keep a guy around? And better yet, can you get an engagement? They don't got no answers. And they don't like hearing that because it's the truth. Then he's able to back up what he says with empirical data. So that's why these women hate him. They're doing big uh, big clubhouse chats, calling him a scammer or whatever. Listen, you guys want to call him a scammer? That's fine. That doesn't take away from the fact that this man is speaking facts. Like he's, uh, Kevin Samuels is a facts machine when he dissects the problems with black women. They can say whatever they want. The thing is this. You guys don't like the fact that the information is true and you want to go and make ad hominem attacks on things you can't even prove. And then to bring it back full circle, last point, Lakar is 100% right. A lot of these women that get on this show with Kevin, they get on there simply to get attention from an older, attractive guy, no homo, right? Uh, and be able to get some clout on the internet and talk to Kevin Samuels. You know, like that celeb, I think she called in uh, a couple weeks ago. I forget her name. She'd been arrested a, a bunch of times. She's a celebrity. She called him. She called him to get attention. She didn't take any of his advice serious. She calls up drunk about her problems. da, 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 da. It goes back to what I always say. A lot of time when women talk to you, they don't really want solutions to their problems. They just want to talk to somebody about it and like get attention. So that's why I think he's getting hated because not only does he tell them their problem, crush their realities, but he also gives them the uncomfortable reality of where they really stand in the sexual marketplace, contrary to what society does. Because what let's keep it real, what does society tell black women? You're beautiful the way you are, no matter how fat, rude, or masculine you are. You're a queen, girl. Hell no. Beyonce been lying to you bimbos for too long because she tells you all the single ladies, but then she goes back in Jay-Z. So, you know what I'm saying? And, and Kevin is basically giving them the reality. So that's my little thing right there. Uh, the women are going to get mad at me, but you know what? Damn, son. Where'd you find this? Yeah. And that's that, gentlemen, is why Myron is clearly going to be the next graduate Ooh. of the set. Let us go to Antoine in Atlanta. Um, he wants a little bit of advice for guys of a younger genu uh, genuation generation. Antoine, go ahead. What advice can you give us to add on to what's happening so we can really be so we can really take uh you know the fruits of the, the labor that y'all are doing. You know, really take you know take that home. And Hotep, transfer uh, to the next generation. All right, listen, we're gonna go around the panel with this one because this is a very very good question. I'm gonna start with Hotep. What advice can you give to younger generations, to younger guys who watch the show? Like what, like where do you start? So I know that brother's black, right there, right, Lucario? <laughs> oh yeah, he's, de he's definitely black. <laughs> we gotta make sure though. We gotta make sure because I qualified. <laughs> he qualified right there. You know what I'm saying? So I know he probably dating black women. Here's here's the thing with black women. Black women idea of mate vetting is different from other women. Ooh. You have some animals in the wild where they 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 fight the man. Or, or or try to ward them off and only one of them would win the mate. That's how black women mate. A woman's idea of masculinity is when a man acts like a woman. Now, what makes Kevin Samuels popular? Reactions. Yep. The problem with the relationship between black men and black women is we react to their bullshit. When they start the, they trying to see if you gonna react. Mm. Mm -hmm. The minute you react, you validate they. When a black woman wild out or, or say some shit to me, I'll be looking around like, nigga, she must be talking to somebody <laughs> else. I'm not like I don't, I don't feed it no energy. When she sees that and she can't knock you off your boulder. You pass the test, and then she start acting like a little Asian girl around these parts. But she gonna keep testing. And Lucario, what is your advice to Antoine and young guys like him who watch the show? They take in this game. What's your advice to him moving forward, man? Um, I basically say this, man. You got to make it a hundred percent about yourself, and that also means that a hundred percent of the responsibility falls on you. So a lot of times, what happen is is that the reason why uh, a lot of guys have issues with women just in general is because they're pointing the finger at the women and they're not actually doing their own thing and actually making women follow their situation or follow their lead. See, one of the, one of the key reasons why Kevin is even blowing up 
is because men dropped the ball. Because yeah. if men didn't drop the ball, women wouldn't be acting the way they acting. You right. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's that's the that's the situation we got here right now. So all I would say to, to to young dudes out here is you got to make sure that when you're dealing with the woman, when you're interacting with a woman, you have to make sure that you're so on point and making sure that she is following your lead, respecting you, and 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 making those situations happen in that manner. So that you won't have these issues or these problems because the issues and the problems keep arising because men aren't really standing on their square. You understand what I'm saying? And they're not taking a hundred percent responsibility. When you take a hundred percent responsibility, then what happens is, is that you say to the woman, listen, this is my program. This is what it's going to be. And if you want to be with me, you have to adhere to what my program is. See, the only reason why the women aren't adhering to the program is because men aren't standing on their square. They're always switching up for the women and giving the woman a leg up and letting the woman think that she's the one running stuff. She's the one that's going to make everything go down. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And so I'll tell guys they got to make it 100% on them. Okay, good stuff. Said My advice to young guys like Antoine is, and I agree, I agree with Myron, it comes down to self-improvement. When you're in your 20s, dude, you're a walking hard on. I know because I was a walking hard on when I was in my 20s. So <clears throat> the life doesn't really start to get good for guys until we're in our 30s, right? But that doesn't happen unless you put in the work in the 20s. In your 20s, I know you want to chase girls and do all this other kind of stuff. And that's fine. You can do that. Get your experience. You're going to fall and bust your your your. Okay, fine, fine. But you need to work on your body, your mind, and your finances. Get in, listen. You're young. You're full of testosterone. It's dude. If you're if you're twenty if you're in your twenties, you should, dude. You're in the gym for a month and a half. You can be ripped, right? There's no excuse for a man not to be in shape in his twenties. Work on building a strong foundation in terms of your body, because if you dude, the quickest way to increase your sexual market value in any sexual market is to is to be in good shape. You optimize body composition, everybody starts to look at you differently. Um, <clears throat> number two, you got to strengthen your mind, dude. Read books, man. Tra uh, you know, if, if you know, try to travel, try to see the world. Um, and I know you don't have much money, but dude, do do the best job you can do trying to expand and free your mind. I know people who have never left their counties. And they're miserable human beings. They don't know that they're miserable. I was just in Detroit, and one of my Uber drivers has never been outside of the state of Michigan. That guy is never going to be anywhere. It, it's just, it, to me, that's sad, right? Work on your mind. Read books. Watch this kind of content. Educate yourself. Um, uh, be curious. Do you know? Be curious about things that you don't know about. Um, next, get your finances in order. Listen, just because you're not making a lot of money doesn't mean you can't stash some away. Yes, you're going to make more money than you've ever made in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, but you need to you need to develop good financial habits in your 20s so that when you start making money in your 30s, you can put those good financial habits in action when you actually start making money. Body, mind, finances, and fertility. That's the number one thing. You can neglect all of these things in your 20s, and guess what? I did. I got fat in my 20s. I did not strengthen my mind, and my finances were a shit show. So much so, so, so much of a shit show. In fact, when I got divorced, I didn't lose anything because I didn't have any money. But the one reason, the one reason that I am where I am, or one of the main reasons I am where I am now is because I didn't knock anybody up. I don't have any kids, at least that I know of. Dude, having an illegitimate kid or two, that is the quickest way to derail your life. If you get a girl pregnant at 22, 24, 25, 28, your life will never be the same. Your life is never going to be the same. You're going to be in the child support system. You're going to have baby mama drama. You can't just up and leave and go travel because you got to. If listen, if you listen, I'm here to tell you I, I'm, I'm living proof. You neglect your body, your mind and your finances. You will be just fine. If you just protect your seed, that is the number one thing. If you haven't heard anything I've said, protect your seed. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, for the call, Antoine.